This is going to be a video that sounds like I'm attacking someone. And in a way, it should be interpreted that way because the person is guilty of doing so. But I'm not going to. I'm also going to archive a set of links and not add them to the video, at least not directly. It's not going to be easy to look the person up. I'm a welder, an NDT technician with something, with certifications, 40-hour radiation safety training, limited thickness plate certifications and positions, etc. Okay, the guy's a welder, and he uses something, has been trained in something, or has worked with something, but isn't really hands-on about it, of using a particular type of piece of equipment for X-raying very heavy-duty things. It's a hard X-ray machine. And it uses a radioactive material inside of a container that's a shielded box. You pull back the shield, it provides the energy, and then you put the shield shut, and that makes your image. That's literally all it does. This is not the same thing as a dental x-ray machine, which is designed on purpose to be the lowest power x-ray machine you can come up with just about. That is unidirectional. This is a omnidirectional radioactive pellet that's either slid out of a container, which is the most dangerous type, or has a shutter on it, which is the slightly more safe version. Welders have to use different equipment than dental people and medical people. An individual who has learned only one level or one type of safety methodology will not have the same ability or knowledge for someone who knows something very, very different. A person, we'll call him E.L., who had his name literally as part of his YouTube channel and has a name that's so unique it's nearly impossible not to locate his LinkedIn profile, um, decided to go on to a YouTube channel uh, where a guy, in a fit of rage about how he had gotten a big bill for medical uh, work in the United States, had decided to do something very specific. The one thing he could recognize out of his big bill was an x-ray that was taken. He wanted to see how expensive it is to build an x-ray machine. So he actually got some parts off of eBay and other places and built an x-ray machine. If you're not aware of how an x-ray machine that runs on electricity instead of a radioactive pellet, it's based on it being a standard vacuum tube technology. You present a high voltage from here to here, and on one end of it, uh, we'll just say it's on the negative end. It could be either, but it's on the negative end most of the time. You have a heating element that runs at whatever voltage and whatever current, and that provides electrons that boil off, and then the high voltage drags those electrons to the target over here, which is the positive plate. And in the case of an X-ray device, it hits the positive plate, hits a material in it, and then that directs a shower of X-rays one direction. That's it. Now, <clears throat> this is utterly 100% not related to a welder's training on X-rays. Uh, because it's a unidirectional X-ray source, and it's insanely low power. It's not, it's not X-raying through steel or concrete to test it for, for validity. It's X-raying a human mouth. It's not even able to do an X-ray through a head or a chest. It can do it through a hand because it's about the same thickness as your jaws. And that's really all there is to it. This is a very, very limited group of things that you would have to look up to know this. The, the YouTube article, I'm not YouTube article, the Wikipedia article on x-ray machines also in, in, includes these other types. And I'll leave links to this information. Now, what this person did, we'll call him EL, decided to show up in the comment section and then tried to educate people in the comment section with the little bit of knowledge that EL had that was dangerous to give them advice on why the uploader of a video was wrong making a electrically powered x-ray machine out of something designed on purpose to be low power, unidirectional, and more importantly, saying he didn't know what he was doing because he wasn't leaving it, he was leaving it unshielded. Something directional like that will actually release x-rays in other directions, but at such an insanely low power level that it might not be dangerous. I want to point out that the energy level out of an x-ray machine to your mouth may be lower for, 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 for purpose angle than the x-rays coming off the back of an old CRT monitor. Because I, I, I have a very small amount of experience in this, but I had to double check tubes when I was working in a place repairing computer monitors. 
It's like being a TV repairman, only I was doing it for computer monitors. It's almost the same work. But I had to use a device to detect x-rays, because when they go bad, sometimes they produce x-rays, and I have to test for that. And yeah, at a, after, after we got a bundle of 80 uh, junk monitors that I was able to get running again and make work correctly. I mean, just get them working and then burn them in. That's 90% of the work. The ones that don't work, you, you scrap them for parts, find the bad part, and throw it away. Because I'm, you don't want to go through the chain reaction of this part blew up six other parts to try to find all the good parts. You just take all the parts out and test them individually. After you've done that, there's no reason to put the monitor back together again. And I know how to gaff the casings, and I know how to puncture the, the tube, and I know how to junk them properly, and where to send the hazardous materials. I know how to do all of that. I had to learn that. But anyway, the part I'm mentioning here is I know for a fact that that device I used to test the monitors to see if there was an x-ray leak, it wasn't a go-no-go. No go. It was actually had kind of a scale to it. It included a listing for testing x-ray machines for dental work. And the dental work energy output, the, the dental x-ray machine, would put out less energy than the back end of a, a potentially bad monitor that you were using that was functional. Because I had a monitor totally functional, but it was making that thing bleep. So that means you, many of you might have had a monitor like that that was punching out x-rays. And it gets stopped by the sheet metal on the back. That's why it's there. That shielding isn't just for electromagnetic fields. It's for x-rays, potentially. Because if they go bad, that's one of a hundred possible going bad methods. Any tube, even a vacuum tube in an amplifier, might produce x-rays if it goes bad. Technically. That's not really normally what happens. Obviously, if it's a, a, a you know, PA amp or, or guitar amp, it really shouldn't be able to do that. But it can technically do it under really bizarre conditions. It's not supposed to be able to do that. The target material on the slanted thing, for instance, it's not the same thing. But it can still technically do it. It's just more likely out of a computer monitor. Contaminated tubes sometimes existed. People would put them in an amp. It wouldn't work correctly. I'd check them. Oh, gee, it's putting out x-rays. So our, we'll call them EL, gave advice of a safety nature that was appropriate if you were dealing with something possibly hundreds of times more intense, and gave the wrong advice. He also criticized someone and wouldn't knock it off. And then when he got confronted, because he has a very unique name and he was easily tracked down, he wanted to get, I mean, he went into I want to be lawyered up mode. Basically, this individual is a perfectly normal person on the phone. I'm going to have a video link for the source of this information. And... He's an asshole on the internet. When people have an anonymity, I don't, I'm visible, but I am still, you can't track me to my house, for instance. At least I hope not. Um, when people have anonymity, sometimes they do horrible, horrible things, like encouraging people to kill themselves or telling people they're ugly and they don't deserve to be loved. Because people turn into assholes when there's no feedback for it. So I'm evaluating EL's YouTube channel. Now, this is something that I don't really need to do. But Evan has had a channel since October 30th, 2009. Lists favorite channels, lots of cool channels. Has playlists with really just classical music and only three songs. No video uploads. And has never stuck his neck out and gotten criticized. So EL, if you're watching, and I'll title this so you can find it. Instead of acting like the coward that you became, you should simply get, answer the phone for the person who you damaged. You are one of, you're featured, but you're one of hundreds of people that criticized this guy for making an x-ray machine, deliberately picking the parts that would have the lowest likelihood of hurting anybody, especially himself. You need to actually own up to say, yeah, when I get on the internet, I turn into an asshole. I, I'm, I do it as a way to lash out. I'm a jerk at people. I mean, everybody's done that. We've all had our bad moments. And then I want you to upload a video on YouTube and let people roast you in the comment section. And then respond to it. I'm not kidding. You bullied, you, you among many, but you bullied somebody into not uploading anymore. That's literally why he said, I'm done. I'm not going to upload anymore. You are literally the reason his Wikipedia article indicates that he's no longer uploading videos. This is somebody who put out stuff, doesn't charge any money, and did not make any mistakes or do anything wrong, and you're an ignorant dork for saying you know better. You are unqualified, and this is the other thing. 
E L. Um, you're a welder and NDT, non destructive testing technician, and you have a certification you stated. Now, I don't know if you know this, but depending on which state you're in, you went to New England Institute of Technology. Okay, that's fine. A person can make a complaint to have your certification for safety, you know, 40 hour radiation safety testing. Someone can request to have your licensing taken away. I can. Anyone can. Uh, I, I have videos up where I, 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 I'm going to explain this very clearly. I'm a amateur uh, designer and technical person concerning firearms. I don't have any certifications. I make that clear. I'm a fanboy at, at best. But I learn about things, and that's all I do. But I don't tell people safety stuff that I don't know about. I'm quoting other people's safety instructions. You know, like SAMI and the other organizations that design equipment to safely test ammunition, firearms, etc. I tell people to do the things that will make it almost impossible for them to hurt themselves. I'm the, I'm the, the, uh, the, uh, the safety sally that shows them at the comment sections about how you set up a, a range to test a gun when you're doing an unknown quantity in a, in a, in a uh, like a rifle, like a testing a salted round or blowing up a barrel. And I'm, I'm offering to help people on this information to just give them some data because I've actually worked with that kind of equipment before. Someone I worked for at one point had that kind of equipment and made it impossible for me to get hurt. And thankfully it worked that way. And I'm also the dork that went home thinking I knew what I was doing and was, uh, uh, dismantling ammunition or taking ammunition that was taken apart already and I was trying to um, dispose of it and I ended up setting off about 8 pounds of propellant projectiles and casings into my face and had to dig the casings out of my face. Thankfully the bullets didn't hit me. I almost blew my head off. Yeah, I'm safety trained. I know what I'm doing. No, I don't. I made a mistake. Uh, El, you are an overconfident Dunning Kruger effect person, and you need to acknowledge that. And yes, anybody could go to your pages, which I won't link to, but it takes. I'm not kidding. Your name is so unique. You might want to change your. Well, you're too late. I mean, seriously, if you look up El, you'll find his LinkedIn page and everything about him. Period. Your 40-hour radiation safety training can be challenged, which means you'd have to take the damn thing again. Because what in most states and counties is done for any safety training is if someone makes a complaint that you have demonstrated a lack of knowledge of safety in the area, this is qualifying, you can be forced to take the same damn thing again at expense. Most of the time it's free for depending on where you are. I've taken safety training and it was free. But failing a safety training or having someone demand that you take it again, it might be at your expense. That's the worst I could do. But you deserve it. You shit on someone because you perceive them as doing something that you're not able to do safely. And you don't stick your neck out the way he did. That's irritating. And I take this insanely personally, obviously. Uh, people critique me for all sorts of crap. And you know what happens? I respond to them, and so did this other YouTuber. And then this person, not just for you, but for all the other nasty comments, decided, I'm not going to post anymore. Now, I've gotten used to the negative comments, much worse than that guy got. But nobody should have to put up with that kind of shit. EL, you're a welder, a non-destructive testing technician, and you got some safety training. And you were completely and utterly fucking wrong. And I challenge you to do something terrifying and prove you can do it. Post a video saying you were wrong. Post a video saying that nobody should have listened to you. Go back to your comments and erase them. Just own it. Do the thing that most people fucking can't do. They won't do. They'll get a lawyer tell them not to do it so they feel better. But really, no, seriously, stick your neck out and do it. You know what's going to happen in the comment section? They'll respect you. Right now they can't because you won't let them. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. That's my advice to you, EL.